Hi, I'm Bill Holcomb and welcome to this week's stunning Misty Mountain Landscape tutorial. You can download my simple sketch via the link in the description where you will also find a list of materials used for this painting. For the mixing of our colours, first of all we drop in some clear water in a few of the wells. Then we've got Windsor Yellow in a couple. Then Scarlet Lake into the second one with the Windsor Yellow. Then Windsor Blue in those three. Then we add some Scarlet Lake to the top two. And here this card is showing you the strength of the different colours in the wells. We start with a big mop brush, 20, something like that, with yellow at the top of the sky, then halfway down some of the red colour, which is the Scarlet Lake and the Windsor Blue. Um, we avoid as much as possible the top of the mountains, but we can do some lifting later to take away any pigment that's gone a little bit over. Just blend those in, still using the mop brush. We can use some tissue to mop up a little bit here and there, as I'm doing now. Also eventually use tissue to mop up the sides where the tape is to avoid creep back. And now I've dropped down to a smaller brush where I was blending. And now we've gone into a three quarter size flat brush with some Windsor Blue at the top. And then some pure Windsor Yellow, still using the flat brush three quarter size into the painting. As demonstrated. And then the same again, pure Windsor, sorry, pure Scarlet Lake um, over top of the Windsor Yellow. Blend those in still using the flat brush just uh, on its side this time blend blending them in because we want a dramatic sky that this is what uh, has been requested by a number of our viewers can you please do a painting of mountains with dramatic sky so we've listened to your suggestions and this is what we're providing so drop in, whilst that's still wet, wet and wet, some more of the Scarlet Lake colour with the three quarter size flat brush and blending in. And strengthen up a little bit more with the Windsor Yellow. Letting them all fuse in here and there, giving a nice blend of colours. Then at the very top, we've got some winds of blue again coming in. Still wet and wet. Using that three quarter size flat brush again. And now the darker version of the winds of blue and scarlet lake coming in to help us form some cloud shapes. Dropping them in amongst the bright colors that we have as our ground still using a flat brush. The flat brush, as I often mention, helps you um, achieve much more control when you're doing things like clouds, also when you're doing waves on the ocean, things of that nature. So bear that in mind and you'll find you have more control than a rounded point brush. So think of the clouds do varied shapes to make it interesting and remember that the closer we get to the horizon the thinner the clouds get as we're demonstrating now you can dry that with hair dryer and as usual it dries much lighter then use a little bit of water with a number 12 brush or 10 and lift with a tissue We've gone slightly over the edge of the mountains, but that won't matter because there'll be very dark color up there. So what we then did quickly was a wash of clear water all the way across all the mountains, right down to the bottom. And then we've gone into our blue. Um, you can use a rounded brush here for this one, something like a 12 with a nice point on it and uh, go start at the very top of the mountains so the most distant ones um, you've got three ranges here so the distant the middle and the foreground so these distant ones
and as you see we start at the top of each mounting and the pigment as it comes down the paper because our paper is at an angle on a board with a block of wood underneath the top to create a slope which enables the paint to slowly come down the paper and that fuses in to the clear water wash that we already laid down and so we're just neatening up here and there achieving that blending in bearing in mind that that area that i'm working on now is just pure water where the winds of blue is fused in now i dried that all with a hair dryer and then i've gone into a wash of clear water again for the middle range of mountains starting at the top of the mountain range there using say a number 12 rounded brush and um, bringing that blend of water down again all the way down then your mop brush to finish it off because it's quicker for that bottom section right now you're into your winds of blue again it can be a slightly darker version but it doesn't have to be because our most distant mountains are very faint from what we've achieved already so just use your nice rounded pointed brush um, for this your number 10 or 12 and please remember to like and subscribe because if you do so it's all free and we notify you each time a new video is posted so you can keep up to date and see the latest also don't be afraid to make suggestions and comments and um, refer us to your friends um, because that will help us for achieving more airtime so whilst that's wet you could go into something like a number two brush now and drop in some Windsor blue at the top and then it's nicely fusing in. That's dried off and we've used the hairdryer to help it and then I'm using a malleable eraser to get rid of some of the pencil lines on the tops of the mountains as demonstrated now. That type of uh, erasure doesn't harm the paper. Uh, so we've got our mop brush and we're laying in some water for the nearest range of mountings towards the foreground. Come all the way down and then I'll drop uh, in some more water right at the very top so for a bit more accuracy using a number 10 or 12 brush again. Coming up to that pencil line then we're going to drop in some blue again and as you see uh, we have already begun to achieve a nice misty fill between each mountain range and if you get a little fleck like that because these brushes if they're good can be quite springy and they might flick up a, a little bit of paint as you saw I used the tissue to quickly dab that and get rid of it so carry on with that let it fuse in at the bottom there it's fusing in quite nicely going to give us a, a misty fill and at the very bottom once this is all dry we're going to lay in some trees um, the trees are like the shapes of pine trees for this um, area Blend, blend that in as I'm doing now, still into the water and if necessary use a tissue to dry the edges onto the tape so we don't get creep back. Creep back is where the paint dries but it's still wet at the edge and once it's dry the wet part starts creeping into the dry part. Now we're mixing up some green so we're using our existing blues and then we've got some Windsor yellow that's gone into it. And for the darkest, I got some light red that I put in there, light red and Windsor blue. And that will give a very dark color. You can carry some of that over to the other pan, the middle pan. And now I'm demonstrating with a spare 
piece of card, which is also useful, how strong those paints have come out. Then you can use um, the side of a flat brush to do as I'm now demonstrating, to drop in the trunks of the trees. You could use a three quarter or a half or something like that, whatever you have available to hand. Do those first and then we'll be doing the foliage, the limbs on the trees and using the scribe's side brush scraping technique you can use a number four for this and for fine detail you could drop down to a number two. So as always you're doing an underpainting at first with the side brush technique and then either whilst it's still a little bit wet or dry you can then drop in a stronger version of that color on top to shape the trees even more and give them more definition as i'm doing now so continue scraping that and we're getting close to the end um we'll show you the rest of the painting soon because we don't need to do all of these trees on video you'll, you'll see how they come out and um, if you are enjoying the video if you would like to support the channel please click the like button comment below or share the video with friends we really appreciate it and here's the final finished tutorial thanks for watching see you next time